Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're doing well. Today you join me back down the farm on a very hot afternoon because we are going to have a look round a, a very cheap little Fiat 500 that I have bought for Sophie to sell, Sophie's bangers. Uh, but you wouldn't think it to look at it. I only paid £1,400 for this little Fiat 500 and it's actually a really pretty smart looking thing. And there's quite an interesting story that goes with this car in which there could be a good few lessons for all of us. So let's check the car out. Here it is, our 2012 Fiat 500, uh, and this is a lounge version, which means you get the nice alloy wheels. This one happens to have a nice big sunroof as well, which is quite a nice added feature. And it's got quite a nice red interior. Fiat do these nice sort of bright interiors, which appeal to the market that this car is going to appeal to. And it looks like quite a smart thing, doesn't it? If we walk all the way around, it looks really nice in this sort of off-white, old English white, whatever they'd call it. We've got our little Italian flag on the back there. Um, looks nice and tidy all the way around. Bumper's got a bit of a weird fitment here, look. It's about the only thing I can really pick out. The bonnet doesn't really fit with this wing and something weird's going on with the front bumper there, isn't it? Also a bit of a scuff on this alloy. Not that that would really grab your attention normally because it is the uh, near side front alloy wheel, which tends to be the one that uh, gets dinged up the most. There's minor curbing on this. The back two seem in really good condition though. Inside, it's pretty tidy. It could do with a quick hoover out, but nothing crazy. You know, some of the uh, states that we see when it comes to part exchange and cars that we buy in, this one's actually pretty good. Considering this is a cream steering wheel, Look how clean that is. You'd expect that to be covered in dead skin grease and just nastiness, but it's not at all. The uh, rear view mirror has got a bit of a crinkle type effect going on, which tends to happen. Uh, and we have got a nice big sunroof with a blind that goes across. So really a nice added feature. The boot actually works, which is always a bonus on a Fiat 500 slash Ford KA, where they're basically the same car. And they are forever blowing uh, boop switches um, so they don't really open up. We'll pop the bonnet as well and have a look under there. All looks quite clean under here. Nothing standing out as being particularly bad. There's a bit of rust or something's happened there. Just thinking about this corner, is there anything obvious there? But not really. This car came with service history, two keys, I think, if not the one, but either way, for 1,400 quid. What a beautiful little car. So why was it so cheap? Well, I'm sure some of you will have guessed if I haven't put it in the thumbnail, but this car was a category C, I believe, right off in 2015. And I'm gonna guess that it had a bit of a prang on this front left corner here. And that's why the bonnet doesn't quite line up. I imagine it's just maybe had a new front bumper and maybe it's had a new wing as well. So nothing too drastic, um, but it was a category C write off, which I guess is the higher version. That would be today's version of a category S. So structural, not just cosmetic, but actually structural as well. Maybe some suspension and steering components were changed as well at the same time. We knew it was a category car anyway, um, as soon as we got the inquiry to buy this car, because we put it through our basic sort of HBI check, which is uh, Experian through Autotrader. Autotrader, if you've got a package with them, um, X amount of cars or whatever, you get this Experian check. So it is a fairly basic one. Um, but it kind of gives you the heads up straight away. So we knew that, uh, but the customer didn't. As far as they were aware, when they bought this car a year ago from a garage local to us, this car had no hidden history or whatsoever. The garage was obligated to tell them that, which they would have known because they are obligated to check also, as we do with every car we sell, we've got to check it, make sure if it's got a hidden history, because if it is, you need to make the customer aware that we're operating this as a business. It wouldn't be fair to buy something that has a hidden history and keep hiding it to try and make more profit. But that seems to be exactly what's happened here with this Fiat 500. 
of course, to the untrained eye, even with this slight panel gap issue going on here. If you don't know to look for things like that, this car looks really pretty and really nice, doesn't it? And that's why they paid £4,000 for it a year ago, and they were happy to pay that, even though there were a few telltale signs, red flags, that you should probably look out for if you are going to go and buy a car from a dealership. Um, that might have alerted them, certainly would have set alarm bells ringing for me uh, if I was there. Of course, the best thing you can do to protect your cash when buying a car is to do a car history check. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to start selling you the same old company that every other YouTuber is selling you, because quite frankly, I don't think they are good value for money. I'm going to let you in on a little kind of traders insider tip here. Uh, us traders aren't using that company is far too expensive. We couldn't afford to spend 30 pounds every time for a car history check. So if I need a more in-depth history check, I and a lot of other traders that I know, I'm a member of a lot of traders groups and WhatsApp groups, etc. we will use a company called Motor Check. You can do a HBI check through them. Just one check on its own is 9.99. But if you buy five at a time, it's 19.99, making it three pounds 99 per history check. And if you're shopping around for a car and the first one you come across uh, has a category against it and that's gonna put you off, it's handy to have a few more, isn't it? And that's cheaper than buying one of the other well-known history checks that we all hear about. And obviously I won't name the company that are doing those history checks because I don't have anything against them. They did break up with me after I didn't get back to their emails quick enough um, to have an affiliate link, but uh, it's really not personal. I thought, actually, do you know what? I'd rather tell you who I use and who I know other people in the trade use, which is MotorCheck. And trust me, I'm not sponsored by them. I would love to be. Maybe you should get in the comments and let MotorCheck know that I am singing their praises and letting you good folk know about it. And maybe they will sponsor me or give me some kind of affiliate link, which would give you guys a discount to make them even cheaper. But $3.99 for a history check that will do pretty much everything that that other check will do, if not everything. I don't want to guarantee and say it is or whatever, but it certainly will check crashes. It will check taxi databases. It will check the mileage. It will check plate changes, color changes, all those things. And if it has been through an auction where there've been pictures of that salvage car, there will get pictures of that as well. Check out my Subaru legacy video. For the sake of what it might cost you 10, 20 quid, well worth checking. The other thing worth mentioning when you are doing a HBI check, is you might also find out that it's been written off multiple times. That car we knew when I bought it was a category C, I think, maybe a category D, and it had some rear kind of bumper damage and there was pictures of that on there. Now you're not gonna get that on every one, but you do get it on some and, you know, if it's gonna be on that other history check, it's gonna be on motor check. But of course, our customers didn't do that. They didn't even think to do it. They were buying from a dealership, uh, they trusted them, and they thought they were getting a good car. What would have raised alarm bells for me was the fact that this garage wanted to tax the car for the buyers themselves. And they conveniently didn't have a front page of the V5. Now these days, not all, but a lot of uh, insurance write-offs will be recorded on the front of a V5. So it's always important to check that as well if you go and look at a car. Uh, sometimes, I have seen it, it won't show up on history checks, but it will be written on there like salvage car or whatever it says, category C insurance write-off. It's right there on the front of the V5. But the people who are selling this car didn't want the buyers to see that. It wasn't there, conveniently. They said, we'll tax the car for you because it's only 30 pounds and you can pay us. Now, the only reason you should ever want to do that, and we will do that if we're doing a V62, and we've explained to the customer we don't have a V5 for this car. It didn't come with one or it's, the previous person lost it. So if you do a V62 form, which is basically an application for a new V5 and a change of ownership, then it's easier for us to take that to the post office for you and tax it. So that is a genuine reason if you know about that. The only other genuine reason I can think of is if you've just asked them out of convenience to tax it for you. But in that scenario, they shouldn't really have any issue with at least showing you. And if you really wanted a copy of the front page of the V5, as traders, we do need to keep that main V5 document and we're meant to store it for three years, I believe. We recently had a, a visit from uh, DVLA to come out and check because we print number plates and things like that. They do sporadic checks and they wanted to make sure that we keep those V5 records for at least, I think it was two or three years. Um, so that if anything happens down the line, we've got a record, it was sold on this date, it's all filled out and there is a paper trail there. 
but that wouldn't stop someone from whipping you off a photocopy and letting you have a record of it. I can't see why that would be a problem. But what's gonna happen then is that when you do get your new logbook come to you in the post, it's gonna still have that written on the front and you're gonna see it, aren't you? So in this case, they just never received a logbook. And I think it was transferred. What I'm imagining the garage, and I can't say for sure, did was to transfer it either in that person's name, but to their own address so that it would have been transferred into the person's name, but the paperwork is gonna to come to them so they can manage it and they can keep it away from the eyes of the person who bought it so that they don't know that they've bought a category car unwittingly. It can take up to four to six weeks for your new V5 to arrive, but if you haven't had one by then, if you're a year down the line and you've never had a new logbook, you need to be chasing that up and finding out why. And if you do speak to the DVLA, they should be able to tell you when it was changed and whether it's registered in your address and details or not. I have explained to the customer that really they should be taking this up legally with the garage that sold it to them because that garage has a legal uh, kind of obligation to let them know that this car was an insurance write-off. And yes, there are occasions, and it has happened to me, where you buy a car and you don't happen to know that it's um, a category write-off car. I've certainly bought from private people before, and perhaps the car was such a low value, I didn't bother doing a history check before I had an unlimited amount at my fingertips. And sometimes, um, like you've seen with the Volvo V40 video I bought, you buying so many cars that I don't necessarily do all my due diligence. We've all got our moments that aren't our brightest shiny moments, haven't we? Um, so it does happen and occasionally, you know, a dealer might have a car on their forecourt that they don't know a history about. But this happened in 2015 and the car was sold in 2021 or 22. Plenty of time for it to have been put on the insurance register. It's certainly on there now. Uh, they should have been doing that check and I'm fairly certain that this car was probably bought from auction as a category car. They've got it nice and cheap as a result of that and they've just decided that they're not going to tell people uh, that it's a category car and just hope that they don't check it out basically. I have to say now that I think Autotrader um, certainly and maybe eBay will also tell you on their listings now whenever you put the reg in that it is a category car it'll tell you c d n s whatever it should be on there kind of giving you a, a warning of that so another thing to look out for would be someone listing a car either without the registration or the registration of a different car slightly different or something um maybe by one digit or something again you really need to check the vin numbers check the number plate and run a history check if it's going to cost you you know if you only want one check and it's going to cost you 10 quid well, imagine how much it's cost them in this scenario. That car, I think we would normally buy for say two and a half, maybe two six. So it's cost them well over a thousand pounds just for the fact that it's an insurance write-off and you know, there's no avoiding that. It is gonna be an insurance write-off forever and therefore it's not as valuable. They just didn't know that when they bought it and they paid good money for it. So I guess this is just a cautionary tale that Yes, unfortunately, there are still dodgy dealers out there. Um, you would have a legal comeback. The people in this scenario don't particularly want to. I think they are going to try and chase it up. I did recommend that they do it, but they wanted to sell the car. They couldn't drive now for a, for a little while, uh, I think due to health reasons. And they just, I think, probably just didn't want the stress and hassle of it. It's not really my place to take it up with that dealer. Or you don't really want bad blood in the area, which is why I won't name them. But hopefully, I have you know, I photocopied every single document for them so that they had it to take away with them that would show the date that they bought it, a HBI report to say that it's damaged. So they've got all the information they need should they want to take a claim, which I feel like they should. Obviously, you don't want to stir the apple cart and cause problems among your peers in the car sales world, but if you're being dodgy, I don't really care. I'll fall out with you. I'm not that fussed. Um, you shouldn't be doing that to people. If you can't make a living without conning people, then find something else to do or you know get a job somewhere else anyway just a bit of a ramp for you there and a cautionary tale of course it kind of grinds my gears to be honest that people are still doing this you know as if car dealers don't have a bad enough rep as it is people are doing this sort of crap pisses me off to be honest um but what can you do it's now going to go up for sale sophie's going to get up for sale obviously listed as a category car and it's going to make a great car for someone i don't mind a category right off car i think they're great value but Whoever's buying it needs to know what they're buying. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do get a thumbs up. Don't forget to uh, 
do a shout out to Motocheck in the comments. If I get enough comments on here, I might be able to send them an email with a link to the video saying that everyone thinks uh, they should sponsor me and we should get a discount going for the Shifting Metal community. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe. And other than that, I will see you next time.